What's going on guys? So in front of me, I have a 3800 series case. This is rocking a 1002T amplifier, a 25.6 volt battery, two Rockville six and a half speakers, a 16 millimeter latching switch, and a DC power plug. Well, we're gonna add a USB and a voltmeter combo to this box. It's been asked several times, so we're gonna go ahead and do it. There's a couple different versions you can do. You can get them with USB type C, and you can get them with just straight USB, and you can get just the straight voltmeter, whatever you want. Now the kit that I bought came with the bit. This is an inch and three sixteenths or 30 millimeters. So it makes this process really simple. Now there's a little groundwork you gotta do. You gotta figure out where you want it. If this box is gonna be floating down a river, you wouldn't put your switch or your DC plug on the side right here. You would put it on the front face and probably towards the bottom. But since this is not a floating one, I'm gonna go ahead and put this right here. Super easy to get to and will work just like we want. So I'm gonna have it right above the latch. I'm grab my drill really quick. And we will uh, install this in no time. The cool thing about this is you can add this after the fact and it's not hard. So what I'm gonna do is just eyeball where I want it. Drill out that 30 millimeter hole. Place the drill to the side. <sighs> Clean up all the fuzzies off of it. And now I'm gonna open the case. I'm gonna take the locking ring off of it. And I'm gonna slide it down in there. Reinstall the locking ring. Now if you want a good watertight seal and you don't trust the gasket it comes with, add a little bit of silicone. It's not gonna hurt anything. Once it dries, it'd be nice and secure. But this box is just gonna see a little bit of rain, some splashes maybe, and that's about it. This is more of a shop box than anything for me. All right, now that's installed. Comes with a wiring harness right here. It has a fuse and we're good to go. So what I'm gonna do is find out which one is positive and negative. So on this one, the positive is on the right, negative is on the left. And then I could just plug it in if I wanted, right? But for this video, I'm going to go ahead and cut these leads. Actually, you know what? Just for the video, I'm going to cut the fuse off because I plan to make a uh, actual little power strip with built-in uh, fuses this week for this box and make videos on that as well. So this is going to be like the new shop box where I show you all how to do everything. Let me zoom y'all in over here. Y'all are zoomed in now. There we go. So you want to fuse in line with this. You want to fuse in line with anything, but we're going to be adding relays to this box. So I've kind of skipped that process in this one. You'd add like a two and a half to a five amp fuse just for this. Ain't got me nothing crazy. So I have a positive and negative. Over here I have lever connectors and I always give room for expandability. So I could come right here and connect them, but it would be before the switch. So I'd always have power on that. I don't want that. So I'm gonna come here to my after switch power and I've got a three lever connector there. And then the ground's just gonna connect to the extra ground. And it looks like this one's open right here. Plug it in. Now I can close the box up. And I can turn the switch on. Hold on. Oh, there we go. And now I have the USB charger and I have the on off switch ready to go. Turn that off, it turns this off. Now with this one, it does have an optional on off switch right here, but the problem is it will still drain power on a lot of these. So I recommend make sure you get a 24 volt compatible 
uh, USB voltmeter unless you want to step it down. Let me zoom y'all out. And uh, make sure you put a fuse in line. And then if you want power on all the time so you can charge your phones, just be aware it will parasit drain the battery down. Not a big deal. Um, some of them don't, but some of them do just because they have to have power on that voltmeter all the time for that switch. So uh, right now, 26.5, I turn it off. It's still gonna draw a little power because that the way that they work is they're gonna continuously have a little bit of power on them um, for the USBs because those will still work even when that switch is off on some of them. So I recommend having it after the switch. That way when you turn the switch off, you know that the power's not going through. And we'll be adding relays to this box. So when the relays are in there, there won't be any uh, popping or anything like that. It's gonna take the load off the switch. And this switch is rated for five amps. You could get a 10 amp switch if you want. It's gonna cost you a few more dollars, but either way, you'll be good to go. Hopefully this helps y'all in installing a switch. It doesn't, I mean, a, a USB voltmeter, it's not hard, it's pretty simple. It's just like adding any component to the system.